mining girl players of WoW. Taro here bringing you a mining and herbalism combo 1 to 600 leveling guide. For more free WoW guides, check out my website at tarowoguides.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how to level together mining and herbalism 1 to 600 the easiest and fastest way possible through farming. If you want separate leveling, check my website for that. Before you get started, you'll want to download the add-ons routes and GatherMate or something similar from Curse.com, WoW Interface, or wherever you get your add-ons from. Next, get one herb bag and one mining bag if you plan to herb and mine a lot when you hit 600. If you don't have the extra gold, just go with your normal bags, but make sure that they're empty. After that, ask a guard where the mining and herbalism trainers are. Go there and learn apprentice herbalism and mining. Also, make sure to buy an herbalist spade from the trade supplies vendor next to the herb trainer and a mining pick from the supplies vendor next to the mining trainer or any trade supplies vendor for that matter. They will give you plus 10 to herbalism and mining and are essential for following my guide. You can also use a gnomish army knife instead which an engineer can make or you can just buy one from the auction house. Next, make sure you are tracking herbs and mining nodes by checking the box in the magnifying glass on your mini-map. Lastly, be repaired, have some food, water, blare some music, and have fun. Alright, you can finally start herbing and mining your way to 600. You can level in any starting zone, but I'll be showing tiers full glades. Throughout the video, you'll have zone choices, and I'll put all the maps, including alliance maps, on my website at tarwellguides.com for easy viewing, or you can use my custom routes for the add-on routes. I'll add a link in the info. In Tears Full Glades, just follow the route clockwise, and it's helpful to have auto loot on if you don't already. Just press escape and select interface. Then under controls, check the box next to auto loot. Keep picking flowers until you hit skill level 50 or so in herbalism. By then you should also have around 60 copper ore. It should only take a lap around the zone and then you'll want to fly over to Brill where you can learn journeyman herbalist from the trainer. From there fly into Undercity and smelt the 60 or so copper ore you have as high as you can. After hitting 50 see the mining trainer and learn journeyman miner. If you're alliance do the same but capital city. Next, go over to Hillsbrad and start on the route I have laid out on the map. You're going to follow it clockwise around, staying on the outer route until you reach skill level 125 in herbalism right around when you complete your first lap. Then you can fly into the center and herb up the frozen herbs scattered throughout. It shows 400 skill in the tooltip, but you can just ignore that. After you have the center pick to empty, go back to the outer route and loop around it repeating the route. Once you hit 150 in herbalism and 105 in mining, head to the closest trainer for herbs which will be Terran Mill for Horde or the Wetlands for Alliance. Once there, learn Expert Herbalist. Don't worry about training mining yet. Next, fly over to Western Plaguelands and follow the route on the screen counterclockwise. At first, you'll mostly see Life Root and Strangle Kelp along the water. I wouldn't bother with the Strangle Kelp. You also can't pick the blind weed, but there's only a few on the west side section of water that you might see as you loop back around to the start. Just skip them and keep farming your way around the route. Don't be afraid to go a bit away from the route towards the center into the fields and open area. You can find a lot of herbs here, but the ones in the fields do have some phasing issues. Most of the mining nodes will be on the mountain terrain edge and you'll find the occasional gold vein, but mostly it'll be iron. Stay on this route until you hit 150 in mining and have 225 in herbalism. It'll probably take you 2 or 3 laps. After that, hearth back to your main capital town and learn expert miner from the trainer along with anything else available. Then smelt all the gold ore you have to grab some extra points. Next, go to the herbalism trainer and learn artisan herbalist. From here, we'll head to Thousand Needles. It's a bit of a flight and a great time to take a break. Now go get some pizza or something. Okay, now to get started in Thousand Needles. Follow the route you see counterclockwise. There's tons of sun grass and you'll even find some life root in the beginning down in this little area. Oh, maybe even the treasure chest. I love treasure. Hmm, a blade of the titans, not bad. I think they sell for like a thousand gold on my server. Okay, so back to leveling. This route is pretty simple as you can see. The sun grass will be in the flat areas with the mithril veins along the mountainous edge. After a lap, you should have 260 in herbalism and around 180 in mining. Hearth back to town and go to Fellwood. 
on the way, it's probably a good idea to send all the items you mined and herbed up to an alt to clear out your bags. In Fellwood, follow the route along the left side, picking all the herbs and mining up all the mithril and occasional true silver veins. Herbs and mining veins are pretty well condensed and you should get tons in a small area. Oh, and while you're farming, you might see enemy players gank your faction members. If you saw in the beginning of Fellwood, I was checking out a few alliance. They ganked someone, so I killed them both. Normally, I don't bother killing lobies, but two versus one is a little whack. Continue on the left side portion of the route until you round the top and have around 205 in mining and 275 in herbalism. Then cruise over into winter spring and follow the route going counterclockwise along the bottom. As you loop around going south, head into Mount Hyjal or hearth back to Orgrimmar or Stormwind. Train master herbalist and artisan miner along with anything else available. Then smell all the thorium ore you have. Next, go back to the portals and take the one to Mount Hyjal. Then fly over and down into Winter Spring, plummeting to your death. Just kidding, pop a shoot or flight form if you have it. If not, be boring and fly safely down the whole way. In Winter Spring, continue to fly counterclockwise around my route until you hit skill level 260 or more in mining. This will probably only take a half a lap or less and if you hate burning crusade zones, you can stay a bit longer to decrease your time in BC zones. For herbalism, you want at least 290, but will likely have exceeded that by a lot. Once you hit your skill level targets, hearth back to Orgrimmar or Stormwind, or take the portal from Mount Hyjal. In town, smelt up all the thorium ore you have until at least skill level 275, although you might get as far as 290. Then train Master Miner and anything else available. Next, take the portal to the Blasted Lands and fly through the Dark Portal. Watch out when you zone into the Blasted Lands though because it's a common place for enemy players to camp and gank you while you're loading and completely defenseless as you can see from all the skeletons scattered about. Pansy asses just be upset after getting schooled in an RBG. Just kidding, although it's probably true. Alright, so once you're in Hell's Fire, Fly clockwise along the south half of the route, picking all the herbs along the way. Keep picking herbs and mining until you have at least skill level 315 in both, or make a full lap back around to the main towns. Then, smell all the fell iron ore you have left, which should get you to around 325, but you only need 315 to go to the next zone. Alright, with all that smelted, fly your way over into Blades Edge Mountains, mining any nodes you see along the way, or take the flight path like me and have a short break to get a drink or snack. In Blades, you'll mostly be mining adamantite ore, but there are fell iron and corium veins too. The rich adamantite and corium aren't farmable at this skill level, so check your mini map and if it's one of those, just skip it and move on to the next node. When you're mining and herbing, keep your eyes peeled for treasure chests. This is our second one so far, and oh looky, we found a rare lead as well. An easy kill along with a rare item and achievement. One great thing about Blades is the competition should be non-existent. However, some may like Nagran, Zangramarsh, or the Isle of Keldanis better, which is why, just like any other section of leveling, you can find alternatives in my custom routes or on tarawildguides.com. Continue on my route in Blades Edge until you reach skill level 350 in mining and 365 in herbalism, which should only take one full lap or so. Then hearth back to Org or Stormwind and learn Grandmaster Miner along with anything else available and Grandmaster Herbalist. If you have any Eternium, smelt that and then use it to make Fell Steel, which should give you an extra few points that get you started on the next mining zone. Then take the Zep or boat to Howling Forge. For Horde, you'll need to take a Zep to Tears Full Glades and a Zep from there to Northrend. You can also train in Howling Forge like I do here. Howling Forge has a pretty simple route and just stick to it going clockwise picking all the Gold Clover and Tiger Lily herbs as well as the Cobalt Ore you come across. After one lap, you can stop back in town to smell all the Cobalt Ore you've mined up. I actually prefer Boring Tundra a bit more and have a route for that on my website, but if you decided on sticking with Howling Forge, fly around my route until you hit skill level 365 in mining and 375 in herbalism. While you level these gathering professions, you can also get some other achievements out of the way like exploring each zone if you haven't done so already. 
Next, fly up into Zoldrak, passing by Grizzly Hills, mining or herbing anything along the way. Once in Zoldrak, follow the route clockwise, and as you wrap around to the snowy section in the north, you'll start to see frozen herbs, but you won't be able to pick those until 405, which should happen by your second lap. Oh look, another rare, free gold and achievement progress. Continue around the zone on my route until you hit at least 390 in mining and 425 in herbalism. It shouldn't take but a few laps and as you round the Storm Peaks border, head over into there and start on my route. The Storm Peaks has a fairly simple route, but some sections do have caves that you can go in for a few mining or herb nodes. A bonus for this zone is the possibility of running into the time loss proto drake and snagging yourself a pretty rare epic drake. I found mine from pure luck while heading into Storm Peaks to do a JC Daily back when I played in Wrath. Oh look, I'm a noob and my bags start to get really full. Make sure before you get to this point, you clear your bags out and don't be a noob like me. We'll keep at this route inside the Storm Peaks until you hit at least 415 in mining or more and 425 in herbalism. After you hit those marks or above, hearth back to Orgrimmar or Stormwind and go to the mining trainer. Smell all the Serenite ore you have found, which should be able to get you to the skill level 425. Then train Illustrious Grandmaster Miner, and next go to the Herbalism Trainer and learn Illustrious Grandmaster Herbalist. Head to Mount Hygel and just use the portal you did before. Once in Mount Hygel, follow the route I have up on the map. This is where Herbalism and Mining get to be super easy for leveling. There are so many herb and mining nodes, things just seem to flow a lot better than some previous zones. After about two laps, you probably are going to have around 465 in mining and 475 in herbalism. At that point, you'll want to hearth back to your main town and take the port into Deep Home. In Deep Home, the route is super easy and has tons of mining and herb nodes scattered about. Just like with the Storm Peaks, you'll also have a bonus possibility of finding a rare elite drake. This time it's ANX who can drop the phosphorescent drake, which looks pretty cool. It is still heavily camped, but you never know. You might just be lucky enough to find it on your leveling session. In Deep Home, you'll be on my route for about one lap or until you reach skill level 490 or more in mining and 500 in herbalism. It shouldn't take you long at all. After you hit the target skill levels, take the portal to Orgrimmar or Stormwind and head to the mining trainer. Learn everything available and smelt up the elementium ore you found until hitting skill level 500. It should only take two stacks of elementium ore to do this, but just make sure that you have them in your bags. Next, train Zen Master Miner and anything else available. For herbalism, you can train Zen Master in your main town or train when you take the portal to Pandaria's Jade Forest. In the Jade Forest, we'll be using my top route that you see on the map, but Alliance can use the bottom route if they're starting off in Paladin Village. Anyone going from Dawn's Blossom can pick either. We'll be going counterclockwise, farming Ghost Iron Ore and Green Tea Leaf to start. Here you'll really start to see the enemy faction. Whoa, what's this fool think he's doing? Get up off my node or get ganked, fool. That's right, walk away, Night Elf, walk away. We try to avoid the water areas until 515 since we can't pick Rain Poppy until then. No biggie. My top route has the Windward Isle as part of the route, but it's one area that you'll have to avoid completely since you can't pick most of the herbs until higher levels. Not a big deal, and we just connect the route to bypass it. Make sure throughout leveling or gold making, you take breaks now and then. Also, to keep from being bored, talk to friends, blare music, or zone out watching TV. Having fun should be top priority while doing anything in a video game but getting to the fun might take some boring tasks that need a little bit of IRL tools to be more enjoyable. Oh goody, we found a Woden's Mantig Shanker BOA. Perfect for the rogue I've started. If you notice, my map has these like little green dots and they help me find treasures around Pandaria for achievements that drop a good amount of gold, rare items, or even BOAs. I use the Finders and Riches add-on combined with the TomTom add-on. Being a druid, you might have noticed that it's pretty hacks, since I don't have to actually get out of flight form to loot herb nodes. For mining, I also don't have to wait for the cast time of getting on a mount. I simply go into flight form and I'm off. Mobs attacking me also don't slow me down because of the Torin racial that adds speed to picking herbs. I can simply loot the node fast enough and get out of there. 
It's also nice to not have to worry about other 90s either of my own faction or the enemies. This makes a Torin Druid the ultimate herbalist. If you're not a druid and have to dismount, make sure that you loot the herb or mining node first before being bothered with a mob or enemy player, even if that means CCing them. That way, even if you do get owned or are preoccupied with a mob, no one can come and steal your herbs or ore. Some other good classes for gathering professions are paladins and death knights as well as other classes for many different reasons, like vanish from a rogue or feign death from a hunter. After looping around two and a half times, you should have at least 565 or so in herbalism and mining. You only need at least 535 to go to the next zone for herbalism, 565 or more for mining. Cross over into Valley of the Four Winds and travel along the river. There's literally tons of silkweed scattered along the river and you might even get lucky enough to find a golden lotus node. You'll need a minimum of 540 skill level and you should easily have that already. This one even dropped two Golden Lotus, which is nice. Golden Lotus can spawn at any herb location and even drop from another herb if you're lucky enough. When you loot the actual Golden Lotus node, you also get a lucky buff for 15 minutes that makes it so mobs drop plundered treasure that can contain all sorts of rare BOE items, profession mats, and gold. Here's a video if you want to see some of those drops. A major bonus to picking herbs here in Valley of the Four Winds is the tiller items that you can get to gain rep with each of the individual tillers. It's mainly in this Heartland area, and check out this video for some tips on that. This whole Heartland area is great, and following it up with the Glade section just makes it even easier for leveling or farming here, and that's pretty awesome. Near the vermin though, it can be a bit annoying when you get aggro if you aren't a druid, so you might want to avoid any of your mining nodes close to them. Once you have a skill level of more than 580 in both mining and herbs, head up two zones into Kunlai Summit. You could of course stay in Valley of the Four Winds longer, but a change of scenery is nice and it gets you used to farming in multiple zones for different herbs and ore. After you get into Kunlai Summit, head west until you reach the mountains, and along the way stick to the mountainous terrain for mining and black shot touched areas for herbalism. Oh nice, we found some Trillium! Now Trillium ore is the top ore and comes in black and white. You'll need at least 590 to actually mine it. Once you hit the snow covered area, start picking snow lily and any of the mining nodes that you see, and don't worry too much about the berries if they show up on your minimap. I know it's super annoying, but it's just this small section and it'll be over quickly. Keep following this route I have and loop around crisscrossing the area for ore and snow lily. There are tons of it all around this area and it shouldn't take long at all to hit 600 in mining. Even regular ghost iron nodes will give you points, so don't worry if they show up as gray on the tooltip. And bam, there it is. Grats everyone, and now we finish up herbalism. Come on, snow lily. Nice, we found some and some more to reach 600, which shows as 615 for Torrent since we get a bit of a bonus. Woo, so that took about four hours, but we finally leveled herbalism and mining to 600. And there's just one more thing we have to do, and personally, it's my favorite. We get to list everything to make some mad gold. I like to use Auctionator for this and list everything for 12 hours in full stacks while undercutting any competition. Here's a video link to the Auctionator add-on tutorial if you want to use it for gold making with any items. A lot of people ask me if they should sell ore or smelt it into bars to sell. The simple answer is whichever sells for more. Doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure that one out. For the long answer though, it does really depend. If the price is only slightly different, save your time and sell the ore. If the price is a huge difference, smelt the bars. Keep in mind though, smelting can be super time consuming and you could go out and farm a lot more in the same time it took to smelt the stuff. On the flip side though, you can smelt while you're AFK getting some IRL stuff done. So each has their pros and cons. In two days, most everything sold in the first listing and I only relisted everything a total of two times. The grand total came to 9,480 gold, which is pretty good giving about 2,000 gold per hour farm rate. Well that's it, and grats again on 600 in mining and herbalism. They truly are a great gold making combo to be reckoned with. If you want to see the best gold making routes for each zone, check out the different videos linked on this screen as they're released following this video. 
Thanks for watching, and for more profession leveling and gold making guides, please subscribe, visit our wildguides.com, and share this video. Now go pick some flowers and mine some profits or something. Lates.